So we've discussed uh, the different types of pure substances that can be found in material objects. Um, and, and so we have that under our belt. Um, what we want to discuss now is actually how different material things or how matter can actually change. And that's a, lot, a large part of what chemistry is all about, is trying to understand how different pieces of matter can actually change. And there are two main types of ways that matter can change. The first type of way is called a physical change, and we're going to discuss that at length right now. Physical change is basically when you have an object or your object or your material changes its shape, but it still ends up being made of the same substance. It's still made of the same molecule or atoms that it was originally made of. And one of the classic examples of this is when you have water that's, let's say, in a plastic bottle, the water takes on the shape of the bottle that, that it's in. However, if you pour the water out of the bottle and maybe into a glass, the water will now change its shape so that the shape essentially matches the inside of the glass. But the water is still water. In other words, the material that got poured into the glass, even though it changed its shape, it's still made of the same substance. It's still made of water. So this type of change, changing your shape by being poured from a plastic bottle into a glass, is one type of physical change. And so I want you to have a sense of what a physical change is under these circumstances. It's changing the shape of the material, but not what the material is made of. There's a different, uh, essentially, type of physical change called a change of state. So this is also a type of physical change. And the, the classic example of this is, uh, is shown here. Essentially, let's pretend that you have ice. So this is essentially just very cold water. It's solid water and it has a certain shape associated with it. However, and, and it's, it's a solid. And the idea behind this, uh, behind a solid object, is that the atoms or molecules are essentially fixed in space. They're not perfectly fixed, they may move around somewhat, but you can think of, the, and this is my cartoon representation of a, wa a bunch of water molecules, you can think of the water molecules as essentially being uh, more or less fixed when they're frozen, when you have solid water or ice. So here's one water molecule, and it's right next to another water molecule, next to another one, and then there might be another row of water molecules. And if you have enough of these uh, arranged like this, you end up with an ice cube. However, if you heat up solid water enough, you will turn it into a liquid. And in the liquid, so there's, there's liquid water, the atoms and molecules are moving around much more so than they would be if uh, you had solid water. So this is my representation of water molecules maybe tumbling around relative to each other. So this is essentially what the water molecules might look like um, when you warm them, up warm them up enough so that they become liquid water. So again, this is a type of physical change. What has happened is you've changed the state of the water. You've changed it from a solid state to a liquid state. And essentially what you've done is you've changed the shape of the water, but if you look closely enough, the water molecules are still water molecules, whether they're solid or whether they're liquid. And then again, if you heat up liquid water enough, if you warm it enough, you can turn liquid water into steam. And there, the water is in what's called a gas state. So this is a different type of physical state. You can have solid water, that's one type of state, liquid water, a different type of state, or gaseous water, or steam, as it's informally known, and that, that is a third type of, of state of water. Here, you can think of the atoms or molecules as moving around a lot relative to the, the molecules in liquid water. So to show this, I've essentially shown the water molecules is being further apart and maybe they're tumbling around faster than they would be with liquid water. But again, changing from a liquid to a gas is a type of physical change. You've changed the shape of the water, now it's steam, um, but these are it's still made of water molecules. All of these are different types of physical changes known as changes of state. Now it's not just water that can change state. In other words, water is not the only thing in the world that can go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. Many other materials can do this as well. As an example, you may, may or may not have known this, but this is gold. This is solid gold. If you warm up solid gold enough, you can convert, you can change the state of the gold into a liquid. 
So you've changed the shape of the gold, but this stuff in this picture here is still gold. It's still made of the same type of material. And it turns out you can actually turn gold into a gas if you heat it up enough. So if you boiled away this liquid gold, you could turn it into a gas. You would change its shape again. In other words, that would be a physical change. But the gaseous gold would still be made of gold. So there are many different objects that can change their, their state or change their, their physical uh, composition. So usually the types of changes of state that we're most accustomed to is when a material goes from a solid to a liquid to a gas or backwards. You can go from a gas and if you cool down the gas you can turn it into a liquid and if you cool down the liquid enough you can turn it back into a solid. This is the most common uh, type of physical change that we're accustomed to. Um, however, that doesn't always have to be the case. Under certain conditions you can actually take a solid and convert it directly into a gas. And there are some materials that do this uh, pretty much under the conditions that we live in. There's a material called dry ice. Some of you may have heard of this. Um, dry ice is basically pure carbon dioxide. If you uh, cool down carbon dioxide enough, if you make it cold enough, it will turn into a solid that looks a lot like regular ice, a lot like the ice that we're mostly accustomed to. However, if you warm up dry ice, it actually doesn't turn into a liquid um, under the conditions that we live in. It will, it will turn directly from a solid into a gas. And when you have a material that goes directly from a solid into a gas, that process of going from a solid directly to a gas is called sublimation. And I want you to know that term. Um, it does show up every once in a while in, in other fields, um, so no sublimation. Although the, the process of sublimation is uh, somewhat, le somewhat more rare than, than going from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So this is not as common. Now, I said that there are actually two major types of way that material objects can change. The first type we just discussed, which is essentially physical changes of material objects. The other major uh, way that material objects can change is called a chemical change. So we're going to talk about a chemical change on this slide here. Chemical change is essentially when the atoms in the molecule actually rearrange. They change their attachments. Another type of physical change, or the only other type of physical change, is when one type of atom is turned into a different type of atom. And we'll discuss this one um, in more detail much later in the course. But right now we're pretty much going to focus on the type of physical change when the atoms in the molecule rearrange. This is a cartoon representation of one uh, type of chemical change. On the left here, this is my cartoon representation of two water molecules. This is one water molecule. This is the other one. Water actually consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms attached to each other. So the oxygen is being shown as a blue circle. The hydrogens are being shown as red circles. Two water molecules. Under the right conditions, if you take water molecules under the right conditions, you can essentially rip the oxygen atoms, rip the blue ones away from the red ones, and actually attach the blue ones to each other. So we started out with the blue atoms attached to the red ones, we rip them off and we attach the oxygens to each other. The same thing happens with the hydrogens under the appropriate conditions. We can rip the hydrogens off of the oxygen and we can attach uh, two pairs of hydrogens to each other. And this, you can actually have this happen in real life. You can take water molecules and turn them into these objects over here. And these objects over here are no longer water molecules. This is not a water molecule, and these things over here, these uh, hydrogen atoms attached to each other, are not water molecules as well. Because you've turned, you've changed the attachments, you've essentially turned water into something else. And when you do this, when you change the attachments, that type of change is called a chemical change. And that's the other major way that material objects can change. And we will spend a large part of the course talking about different types of chemical changes that can take place.